Hello, hello, welcome back to another video on the channel where healing and spiritual growth are front and center. This video shout out goes to a Sabrina Evelyn. Thank you for your continued support. And I'm going to dive into something that's going to lead into another series. Like, kind of, it's not really going to be an actual series, series, but I'm going to break some things down for you all. Okay? As, you know, reminders and then information for those who may be new to it. You know, listen, remember, we got stuff on this channel for all y'all, for wherever you're at, the healing and spiritual growth process for post-narcissistic abuse. To realize that that's what was happening and that it happened on the societal level. And this is when we start to connect the dots because it's all part of God sharpening our discernment, okay? Because... In order to be vigilant and aware, having that heightened awareness, that spiritual awareness, to know what's going on out there in the spiritual all around us, okay, to have that really, oh my gosh, that, that deep, close, personal relationship with the Godhead, so he will reveal what we are ready for. Remember, only God knows that, okay? And so he knows where all y'all are at, right? That's why we got all, all, we got videos for wherever you are, and we are going to keep Keeping on, okay? That whenever God reveals new things and then additional insight, because that's oftentimes a lot of what God does, is he reveals additional insight. And I'm like, aha, uh -huh, okay. Because societal level, narcissistic abuse in action, all right? Yes. Isolation. Because one thing we've come to learn, and I said this quite a while ago, because the aging narcissistic abusers, they actually, because the isolation usually comes, like, with the regular run-of-the-mill narcs, okay, all right, with them, isolation comes later, okay, they get trauma-bonded, and then, you know, whatever, you move in together, whatever, and then they isolate you little by little, okay, that's how, that's the cycle at that level, the aging ones, because they, you know, the enemy knows his time is running short, right, so, they want to do the isolation first. They want to try to get you isolated. Then, try to uh, trauma bond you. And so, as a reminder, I'm going to share this one more time. Because it illustrates this, oh my gosh, to the T on how the aging narcissistic abusers do this. Okay? It's like a one toxic workplace. Alright? Yeah. Alright? Several of them. Several Jezebel. Yes, they were all pretty well up there. Okay? They were done. They're, they're doomed. Okay? And so, where the place was located is pretty daggone isolated. Couldn't get it, hardly any cell signal and things like that. But you can get Wi-Fi, you know, obviously connect to their Wi-Fi. But, you, yeah, if you were going to try to get an important call, you were forced to use the landline and all of that stuff, right? They pretty much isolate you, right? They want to isolate you first. And then they start the love bombing. And one of them that didn't work there, but was just a family member who was a Jezebel, who did that shifty eye to the left and down, stuff like that, and so would always try to come up with some kind of food item for me, but it, no, <laughs> good luck with that, you, I mean, you have, they would have to do the research on the type of diet, and yeah, it's a lot of research. Okay, and a narc isn't going to, mm -mm, no, a narc's not going to take the time to do that. They, they want to get you trauma bonded. All right, so that, that attempt always failed. Okay, it never worked. Okay, and then once I was able to identify that the Jezebel, yes, the love bombing with food, since that didn't work, what did they try to do? Okay, it's no secret. My favorite color people know is purple. Always has been because it's neutral, right? And so it's like, ah, okay. And so I'm like, all right then. So once I did reveal that, because I mean, it's like no big deal, right? Well, what I learned how they do this in a subtle way with love bombing is like, I think if I recall correctly, forgive me, Heavenly Father, I was like usually towards the end of the week sometime. They would all, or even the beginning, really, I don't think there was any consistency. Obviously, we're dealing with narcissistic abusers. Um, very inconsistent anyhow. But every once in a while, they would all, like, wear purple shirts. <laughs> I kept them there, y'all, for over a year and a half. I kept, them, I kept them there. Well, not quite a year and a half, excuse me. I stand corrected. About a year and a month or so. Yeah, it's like a, a year and a month or so. Something like that, okay? But I kept them in the love bombing stage the whole time. 
That's the key right there. If you are still in a sticky situation, that's the key. You just keep them in the love bombing stage by not falling for it. Okay? Because you know what you know what they're trying to do. And you're like, because you, let's say you have already broken a good bit of the trauma bond to the individual abuser. Now you're recognizing the narcs in the toxic workplace. Okay? For those of you, unfortunately, who are going through that. Alright? Again, not every, not every workplace is toxic, but chosen ones, like, it, <laughs> oh boy, never mind, another story for another day, all right, but that, you know, they, they did that isolation first, then tried to love bomb, okay, you know, and then, of course, the future faking, see, before I knew what I was dealing with, okay, I remember this, God had to show me another lesson, it's like, before I knew this, I thought, Remember, our thoughts are not God's thoughts, okay? Our our thoughts, I'm going to say it one more time for the people in the back. Our thoughts are not God's thoughts. we got to get used to that. It doesn't matter the order of things or what we think. Like, I thought, you know, because I had never worked a 9-to-5 or before. I had always wanted to see what it was like. And so finally, I felt like God was answering. He was answering my prayer, but to show me, I had to learn some lessons. Mm-hmm. So, it did not take... Now, I knew the one that I replaced was a full-blown Jezebel. I knew that. Uh, and so, I had to give it a little bit of space because I knew they all had just gone through the ringer. So, I was like, okay, you know, that one chance. You know what I'm saying? Give that one chance. Just kind of watch and, and things like that. But the one that was supposed to be, you know, my immediate supervisor or whatever, boy, he, he did. He stared and stared and stared as I was trying to help them get things reorganized and stuff like that. And uh, so, they kept future faking. And so I walked in one day, because their, their theme color, okay, happened to be a particular color, obviously, uniform-wise. And so I wore a shirt that was of that color one day. And what did they try to do? Right. Love bomb and future fake at the same time. Because, yeah, I, went, I, went, I was working there through a temp agency, okay? And so what they did was they love bomb. They said that that color looked good on me. Okay, and in an attempt to try to trick me into thinking that I would get a permanent position with them. But I realized real quick that I didn't, so I told the temp agency, I don't want permanent there. You know, look for something else <laughs> while we were figuring this out. And then lo and behold, what did God do? That's right. We launched Consulting for Heightened Awareness while we were still there. Okay, you all, that is how God works. All right? And then tail chasing. Oh my goodness. Okay, yes, all right, and, and we see this on the societal level, too. The tail chasing, you all, is part of how the enemy gets people tricked into playing themselves. Okay, yes, right, that's, that's, that's what goes on in the Matrix, okay? The narcissistic Matrix is to try to trick people into playing themselves, okay? With that scarcity mindset and all of that, they get tricked into playing themselves out of fear, right? And so they go chasing their tails, Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And and because that is a mindset, they don't take into consideration their neighbor. Remember, we're supposed to love thy neighbor as ourselves. And so what does God mean by that? Okay, you all, yes, this fits. All right. What that means is we go to the store, right? And we can see that, okay, perhaps there's only X amount of this item on the shelf. Chosen chosen one. Always take into consideration that a neighbor might need one too. And we really, we take the time to think, how much of that do I need right now? And oftentimes we realize one is enough. And so we're good with that. Okay? Or, if it's not available, we find an alternate. Remember, chosen ones, we're smart. Okay, y'all? You're smart. You're, you're, you're a problem solver. God is a problem solver. Get around that resistance. Whereas the narcissistic abuser would whine and complain. And, and instead of, you know, uh, instead of looking for an alternative. No, 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 no. They don't want to look for an alternative. Oh, no, 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 no. Why? Oh, because they're trauma bonded to the world. And so they, they think it's the end of the world when they can't find something that they, you know, you whatever. Okay? We all have to outgrow that. As well, but that's all part of the maturing uh, process, putting childish things away. But that narc abuse on a societal level, we see that, okay? Where they are also playing games, right? Mind games. Remember, y'all, narcissism is all about mind games because we are in a spiritual battle for the mind, okay? And see, you know, God not trying to fight for control of our mind. Ha ha! He gives us free will. It's the enemy that wants to try and get control of our thoughts because he can't read them. 
<laughs> he doesn't know what God, he, ne he never knows what God is uploading or downloading. Oh, no, 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 no. Remember, God's not going to turn over our blessings to the enemy. Absolutely not. This is why we learn. Stop doing that. <laughs> okay, yeah, we stop casting pearls before swine. Because it's like, uh, okay, no, what God has for us is for us to serve, like fellow chosen one in the kingdom of God. And so God's not trying to fight for control of our mind. He, he, he All he cares about, what's in the heart, okay? You, you hear me say that a lot, okay? Because it's so true. God's just looking at what's in the heart, okay? What's in the heart? You know, God is a simple God. God is not going to have us chasing our tail. Oh, let me give you another example. Okay, yes, you know, when they give you vague information, right? Oh, that's a big one. They don't give you all the details. Mm-hmm. And then they, you, you go online trying to search, trying to find those details, and you're not getting any direct answers. When, what ends up happening? That's right, wasting time. Uh-huh, that's how the enemy works, right? That's all, all part of the tail chasing that goes on in the narcissistic abuse on the societal level as well. And so we're like, aha. Uh -huh. You know, and then, you know, those top three things we start to notice more often on the societal level. And many of you use your self-thinking abilities. You will, you will remember isolation, mm-hmm, future faking, moving the goalpost with a particular matrix, yep, moving the goalpost all the time, mm-hmm, never wanting to solve anything. No. Right? And then get people to chase their tail with some false fear mongering narrative. So they get tricked into going out there and playing themselves. Okay, that's that's how it operates on the societal level. The way we start to realize this, we start to connect those dots. And we can't unsee it. Remember? It's the same as when God revealed that we were Engage, we, we were, um, I don't want to say like engaging with, but we were associated with a narcissistic abuser on the individual level. It's like, okay, so we learn all that we got to learn. And then we start to notice a similar pattern out there in the world. It was like, wait a minute, there's more to it. This is why, y'all, this is a big reason why the worldview terms, uh-huh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, no longer resonates. No, because we are in the spiritual realm now. We are in the spiritual awakening, spiritual truth. Because narcissism is, is spiritual. To try to get control of the mind. Control of the thoughts. Because what a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's why the enemy is doing it. Because he wants people to gaslight themselves. He wants people... Remember, again, if the enemy can't get to you directly, he'll send a narcissistic abuser. Or, if you know, a flying monkey. If that doesn't work, he tries to trick us into doing it to ourselves. That's right. And that's why we have to unlearn all that negative self-talk. And change that thinking. Let God renew the mind, okay? So that we unlearn all of that. Because part of that renewing in the mind is the clearing of that cognitive dissonance spell. Because the moment God awakened us and we realize we're in a real spiritual battle between good and evil, yeah, the spell's broken, y'all. God breaks that spell right there. Generational curse breakers. Okay, but we have to go through several more processes to get, okay, and then God shows us this and that, and oh my goodness, yes, he just reveals it all, you know, as he promised he would. All right, as always, if you have any questions, you know where to reach me for additional information, insight, and other good stuff. Check out these videos right here. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for watching and for your support. Till next time, show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father. And you keep being you. In Jesus' name, amen.